Hey, what's up, you guys? Mr. Deckler here, back for another social studies lesson for you. Uh, this time on a pretty interesting one, the Roman Colosseum. Uh, lots of cool, cool information about the Roman Colosseum we're going to be talking about in just a moment. Um, I set up my projector, um, give you a little snap shot of what we got going on over here. All right, so I got a projector over here and this rig station for my, uh, my GoPro there. Got my little uh, project, projection uh, laptop over there and, and my main computer for editing stuff over there. So we've got a whole setup going on right now. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the lessons. They take about uh, four hours or so to put together. Um, so just to give you an idea of how much work goes into these things. But enough of that. Let's get started on the, uh, the actual lesson itself here. So um, Rome, you probably know a little bit about the Colosseum already. Uh, it has, Rome has some really unique entertainment um, programs. I mean, by today's standards, they're horribly barbaric, but, uh, but for Rome, uh, this was great entertainment that you would bring your whole family to, right? So um, I have a little uh, snippet of the city of Rome, what it, what it probably looked like uh, during this time period. It's as accurate as, as you can find. And there are two large, um, two large Roman pieces of entertainment in this picture, two Roman buildings. Uh, amphitheaters, if you will, right? So the largest of the amphitheaters um, is going to be this guy here, right? All right, and that one there is called the Circus Maximus. And the Circus Maximus is going to be used for chariot racing. And I'm not going too much into the Circus Maximus today, but um, you don't see that in Rome anymore. There's very little pieces of it left. I think just a little tiny bit of it. Uh, but it was the largest one in Rome, the largest building in Rome um, in comparison to the Colosseum. It was even larger than that. Uh, many, many people could be fit in the Circus Maximus. Um, I believe that number is uh, in excess of 200 or right around 200,000 individuals. All right, this here is the Colosseum, right? Um, and the Colosseum is uh, something you've probably heard of before. Uh, heck, you might have even seen it in pictures and movies before. Uh, it is obviously a really popular piece of architecture in Rome. And you probably know that it's where gladiators fall. But there's a lot more than just gladiator fights that go on in the Colosseum. Uh, there's a lot of other types of uh, spectacles and events that take place there, and uh, we're going to cover them all. So let's get started here. Um, okay, sorry, it's a little lopsided here. I don't think I can do much about that. Kind of working with what I got here. Uh, yeah, well, what can you do? All right. I'll post the PowerPoint itself so you can uh, you can see that if there's some stuff that is cut off. It's the best I can do. All right, so the first thing you should know about is that the Colosseum is going to be built by the um, the last Julian Emperor. Okay, We haven't talked about Augustus yet, uh, but this is in line with Julius Caesar and his descendants, um, Caesar Augustus. There are some good Julian um, emperors, um, and there's some really bad ones. and. Um, Really bad guy was Nero. We'll cover him probably a little bit later. Uh, but he was he was crazy. He was absolutely crazy. Um, and so right after Nero, there's this this crazy guy. Um, there's this big question of you know should we actually even have an emperor? Is that the right way that we should be ruling this this country? Should we go back to the times of uh, the Republic? And there's a lot of people who wanted the Republic back, right? Um, and Nero just was a perfect example of a guy that lost his mind. He was a terrible emperor, and uh, really Rome suffers greatly for it. Um, and builds this giant palace just for himself in the middle of Rome. Uh, there was a giant fire in Rome, and when that fire was over, he demolished all the buildings that were on fire, right, that, that collapsed. And instead of rebuilding these homes for the Romans, he instead winds up by uh, using the land for himself to build this giant palace for himself. So uh, very self-absorbed. Uh, didn't really care much about the lower class, all right, and so gets a really bad name um, for emperors in general. So after he dies, there's a period of unrest. 
Um, the last emperor is going to be Vespasian. He's actually going to settle things down. Takes about he, he's in power for about ten years, and he's the guy that starts the construction of the Colosseum. All right, and the Colosseum and, and all amphitheaters really in Rome, especially the Colosseum in Rome, um, is going to be used by the emperors to put on shows, lavish shows, uh, to appease the people. All right, the people are in a bad situation. They're never really in a place like they were in parts of the Roman Republic. And in order to make the people happy, Roman emperors thought up a way to appease them, right? Just to satisfy their needs. So what did they do? They put on bread and circus events, right? We, we call this bread and circus events. It's free food, or at least very cheap food, and free entertainment, okay? And so the Colosseum was an example the pinnacle, I, I suppose, the, the zenith of uh, the bread and circus events where people went uh, and they watched these spectacles unfold and it was mostly free, right? the Colosseum was free and the food given out during this time period as well, there were lavish festivals. It was great. I mean, it was, it was probably a non-ending party like the, like the Super Bowl, just even more so. And it, and it lasted for days sometimes. They put on multiple days of events. So all of Rome was just in this giant state of euphoria parties going on all over the place. I mean, it probably was a really cool thing uh, if you were back then to experience it, besides, obviously, uh, the change in mentality to today. You know, we don't really get enjoyment out of watching people kill each other, obviously, maybe in movies, right? But we know that's fake. Uh, but they, they did, right? They really did. So a couple things to know about the Colosseum. And again, that's what we're focusing on, not so much the Circus Maximus. Maybe I'll do that later uh, if we have time. The Colosseum is going to be built in, in only about um, 10 years, right? And even though Vespasian is the guy that uh, starts this thing, he won't see it finished. It actually is going to be completed by his son, uh, Titus, who will finish the construction in the year 80, uh, 80 AD, right? And uh, when it's... Well, let's talk a little bit more about its construction first. Um, when we look at the, the Colosseum itself, what it, the Colosseum was built on top of the foundational footprint of the Colosseum is quite amazing to behold to begin with. Uh, they built it on, you know, very sturdy platform that they specifically laid out and that they put concrete down and, and, it, and it's lasted throughout the ages. So just the foundation itself is really impressive uh, with, its, with its structure. We, you should know that they got materials for the Colosseum all over the world, as far away as Spain. And the most of the material that, that the Colosseum is built out of is built using slave labor, okay? So um, the people who are getting the materials are the slaves. And there were a lot of people who died getting these materials. Uh, slave labor, if you were a slave in the mines, it was, it was a death sentence. You essentially, um, you die working in these conditions. Um, they didn't really care much for you. Uh, there were a lot of slaves available, so they worked you to exhaustion, and, and then you died. So how many people were actually killed by the actual construction of uh, the Colosseum? It's, it's hard to measure, but that number is in the tens of thousands, if not uh, in excess of 100,000 uh, people. It was, a, it was a nasty process, um, one of the most nasty in history. Um, all right, so the place that they also chose to build the Colosseum was right on top of the palace. So I told you that Nero was kind of a, a screwball, right? Um, he needed, they needed to erase his memory because what he did was not popular in Rome. So what better way than to demolish that, that lavish palace and right on top of it build the Colosseum, right? And, and the, the name for the Colosseum actually comes from the word the Colossus, right? So th there was a statue that Nero made of himself right by the palace, right? And it was this giant statue of Nero that he had constructed for himself. And they called this the Colossus of Nero, all right? And so once they destroy the, uh, the palace and as well as the Colossus of Nero, they built it right on top of it. And uh, that's why this is called the Colosseum, right? It, becomes known as the Colosseum eventually in history. During the time period, however, it was actually called the Flavian Amphitheater because it was built by um, Ves Vespasian, and that's, that's his bloodline, uh, the, Fla the Flavian um, Emperor. Um, so obviously you know that the Colosseum is going to be put on, um, made to put on entertainment 
for the masses. Everybody went there. Um, it's mostly for the lower class, but it's not uncommon to see even uh, patricians um, going to this uh, to the Colosseum. All right, and so again, it was used to appease the masses. Right, it was used to appease the masses. This is the Colosseum today. This is the complete side of the Colosseum, right? The outer wall is complete on this side. The other side of the Colosseum, the outer wall, this, this part here, um, fell down in the 1400s from an earthquake. Uh, but this is what it looks like currently. So what happens in the Colosseum? All right, so you should know that when it was complete, um, they put on these lavish um, forms of entertainment. In the first 100 days, when it opened up, over 9,000 animals were killed. And that's something you should know about the Colosseum. A lot of people think that the Colosseum was used for gladiatorial events, and it certainly was. But it wasn't just used for gladiatorial events. Um, most of the time it was used for um, man versus beast events, um, where they would take a whole bunch of animals, usually exotic animals, like uh, they would grab lions from North Africa, as well as um, they had elephants in there. Um, and a variety of other exotic animals, and they would train them to specifically try and attack uh, the combatants in the Colosseum. So they would purposely starve them to death or near death uh, so that when there was a human being that emerged in the Colosseum, and here's this lion, they're hungry. They're going to go after that, that, that man, right? And um, so there were people who